The significance of this find is really manifold. There are a number of different elements that make this a, a really spectacular discovery uh, in, in many senses. Uh, first, it's, we've got the presence of uh, two infants that are uh, buried in a, a pit. So a pit was dug out, the infants were laid there. We have grave goods, which are really unprecedented for uh, the New World for this very early period. Um, there's maybe one or two other sites where you've got anything like this um, uh, that, have, that have been associated with the, uh, with the burials. Uh, we also, what, what's important here is we've got an upper burial within the same feature. Certainly, we're dealing with the same related uh, peoples at the site. Uh, and that was treated very differently. That was a cremation of a three-year-old um, with no grave goods. The two uh, individuals that we report on this year uh, are young. One is a neonate. Uh, the second survived birth by maybe six to 12 weeks. So they're very, very young. Um, and in, in many foraging societies, you might not expect to see uh, elaborate grave goods with very young infants. Um, we might expect that with, with adults that have achieved status somehow. Um, so this is interesting. It's difficult to discover those kinds of sites. These, these people aren't sedentary. They don't stay uh, in one place for a very long time. Uh, this, this high mobility is really keyed into their, their life way. And so we're very lucky to, to have found this discovery. The upper child, you know, had no associated grave goods. So it's difficult to get into um, belief systems and, and the way people thought of uh, uh, society, uh, the death of these individuals, uh, etc. Um, with the, the new finds, we actually have very carefully crafted and, and placed grave goods uh, that are really unprecedented for uh, the Americas. With this site, we have a series of antler rods uh, by beveled, so they've been worked throughout um, and on each end, and a number of uh, stone tools. This is really unprecedented in terms of design motifs. We have a few scratches and what could be ownership marks on other uh, known uh, Paleo-Indian uh, foreshafts uh, or, or bi-beveled rods, um, but here it's really, you know, the, the amount of them throughout the entire piece uh, is quite extraordinary. Um, there are a number of other elements that indicate uh, uh, mortuary behaviors associated with these finds, so the presence of ochre. Uh, we know worldwide ochre is a, a common element in uh, funerary customs, mortuary customs, you know, the idea of, of red, blood, life, you know, th those elements, um, you know, may be present. Um, so ochre covered the bottom of the pit. Uh, ochre covered all of the um, grave goods that were that were placed in the in the uh, pit, and also covered the infants um, all the way around all of the bones. Uh, the radiocarbon dating indicates uh, contemporaneity between the lower find and the upper cremated uh, child. Um, so in terms of timing, this probably occurred again both both summer uh, events probably occurred within the same summer, certainly could fit within a, a 16 uh, week window, uh, or subsequent summers, but likely with the same group, likely the same band, perhaps the same family. We'll have to wait for DNA analyses to, to indicate any relationships between the upper child and the two lower children. Um, but this, this contextual control really allows us to reconstruct not only what occurred, but the relationships of the two to each other, to the broader site where we have multiple activity areas uh, around this, this central feature, uh, and also to the broader region where we have now a, a really good um, suite of data from the fauna remains, from the, the lithic and organic technology, um, from uh, seasonal land use strategies, uh, settlement systems, and, and we're beginning to look at social systems and social organization as well. So this really fits into a, a broader uh, understanding of these very early peoples in Beringia.